a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud, one who looked like a son of man, with a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap the harvest, for the time to reap has come, because the earth's harvest is fully ripe. So the one who was sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, who also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came from the altar, who was in charge of the fire, and cried out in a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Use your sharp sickle and cut the clusters from the earth's vines, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and cut the earth's vintage. He threw it into the great winepress of God's fury. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord comes to judge the earth. The, the Lord, Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the, the earth. earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the people with equity. The, the Lord, Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the, the earth. earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful in all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The Lord, the Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the, the earth. earth. Before the Lord, before he comes, for he comes to rule the earth, he shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The, the Lord, Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the, the earth. earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here, the days will come when there will be not left one stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when is this to happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. And he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Two quick observations about the reading that I want to talk a bit about, St. Catherine of Alexandria. First is that in we have the book of Revelation, a double harvest, and the grain that is harvested is the good people who are taken up into paradise. The grapes, on the other hand, not so much. And in fact, the older translation would call them the grapes of wrath. So if you remember the hymn, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, or perhaps John Steinbeck's novel, this is where the title comes from. In the Gospel, it's important to remember that with what's being talked about here, what Jesus' prophecy is all about, is really not so much the end of the world as it is the end of Jerusalem. Okay, when he talks about the temple being overthrown, that happens in 70 AD, when there's a revolution that fails in Judea. 
So, those two observations. But St. Catherine of Alexandria, she is an ancient saint reinstituted into the Roman Missal in this third edition that we have now. And she was an extremely popular saint. She was a martyr. She was philosophically educated and would engage in debate with pagan philosophers, and she would win the debates and convert them. Very interesting. Very interesting there. She was martyred for her faith, and according to the legend, angels carried her body to Mount Sinai, where there is now the Orthodox monastery St. Catherine's. Okay, St. Catherine's is right there. So, she becomes, for various reasons, <clears throat> specifically and especially after the advent of the Crusades in 1095, she becomes an extremely popular protector of pilgrims going to the Holy Land. And very, very often, they would travel from Europe down into Egypt, okay? And they would cross through the Sinai, with or without guides sometimes, and one of the most important places they would go to would be Mount Sinai, to the, to the monastery of St. Catherine, and they always invoked St. Catherine of Alexandria for protection in the journey from there and then into the Holy Land itself, into, into Jerusalem. She was an inspiration for a, Leon, a woman named Ortolana. Ortolana had another daughter after a pilgrimage that she had, and that daughter's name is St. Clair. But another daughter was named Catherine precisely because of the journey that she made, Ortolana, the mother, to the Holy Land. Additionally, you may or may not remember that among the saints who inspired her to lead the French, Joan of Arc was also inspired by St. Catherine of Alexandria as well as St. Michael the Archangel. So, she is an extremely important player, but was kind of pulled off to one side for whatever reason, was knocked out of the calendar, I guess, but she's back in now. And because of that association for me, particularly with the family of St. Clair, I think it's worth remembering her. And so, we do so today. Let us stand and pray.